Okay, so just to continue my Prime Ministerial series, we've got up to Prime Minister number 44, Harold Macmillan. Um, so a quick biography from the Ken Browning Super Web page, as I usually do. Um, Harold Macmillan was born in 1894 in London, and he was a Conservative. Um, he succeeded Anthony Eden when Eden stepped down following the Suez Crisis. Um, I should say more specifically, he was born in Belgravia, which is in West London. Prime Minister Harold Supermac Macmillan distanced the UK from apartheid, sped up the process of decolonisation, and was heavily involved in negotiating the nuclear test ban treaty. The half-American son of a publisher, Harold Macmillan was educated at Eton and Balliol College, Oxford, and served in both world wars. In fact, he was wounded at the Battle of the Somme and some of those war wounds stayed with him for the rest of his life. Um, he rose quickly through conservative ranks, and when the conservatives were elected in 1951, he was made Minister of Housing, then Minister of Defence, Foreign Secretary, and finally Chancellor of the Exchequer. So a very experienced minister. When Sir Anthony Eden resigned as Prime Minister in January 1957, Macmillan came out of the wreckage of Suez to lead the demoralised Conservative Party and a country that was still in the depths of turmoil. Despite telling the Queen that he did not think the new government would last longer than six weeks, Macmillan quickly restored the country's confidence and its fortunes. In domestic policy, he was determined to avoid the mass unemployment he had witnessed in the 1930s as MP for Stockton on Tees. A champion of economic farming and the moderniser at heart, as living standards and prosperity in Britain increased, he was able to claim that the British public had never had it so good. Dubbed Supermac, the Conservative Party increased its majority in the October 1959 general election. It's also worth bearing in mind, this is my own words here, that Britain was finally starting to come out of the period of post-war austerity. I think this is one reason why Macmillan is often highly amongst modern prime ministers, because he's associated very much with that period and in contrast to Eden. Um, so just to continue with the article. On the international scene, Macmillan was busy with the complexities of the Cold War. He led the country through the Cuban Missile Crisis and was the first truly nuclear armed Prime Minister, taking important steps to maintain the effectiveness and credibility of the nuclear deterrent world in the 80s. He was responsible for reorientating British foreign policy and he repaired the damage done to Anglo American relationships through his close friendships with Presidents Eisenhower and Kennedy. In fact, it's often been said. In JFK biographies that Harold Macmillan was his closest foreign um, friend uh, as a leader, uh, almost a mentor figure in a sense. With his Winds of Change speech in 1960, Macmillan distanced himself from the country from apartheid and he speeded up the process of decolonisation following a series of studies into the costs and benefits to the British Empire. So in this sense, Macmillan was very much a pragmatist. He realised we were no longer a superpower. He realised that fighting the winds of change would have been counterproductive. And this is when the concept of a Commonwealth of Nations began to really take effect. Um, he toured Africa, incidentally, at that time. Macmillan acknowledged that Britain's future lay with Europe, but his plans for entry into the new European Common Economic Community were set back when the French President, Charles de Gaulle, said no to Britain's application in January 1963. And they had quite a rocky relationship, I think it's fair to say, with de Gaulle. Just to provide a bit of context, all the world leaders at this time were Khrushchev from Russia, de Gaulle in France, I believe Conrad Adenauer in Germany, and of course President Kennedy in the United States. Um, devastated uh, at the rebuff by de Gaulle, he wrote in his diary that all our policies at home and abroad are in ruins. His greatest achievement on the international scene came a few months later in August 1963 when he was heavily involved in negotiating the nuclear test ban treaty earning prayers from Kennedy and Khrushchev for his patience and diplomacy. By 1963, the economy, thanks to problems with the balance of payments, was faltering. Harold was also increasingly portrayed as out of touch. The sacking of the six cabinet ministers in an event that became known as the Night of the Long Knives did that to refresh the government. After a series of scandals, the most damaging of which involved the war minister, John Profumo, he resigned in October 1963. Um, it's worth noting that today the Profumo scandal probably wouldn't have the same impact as it did in the early 60s. Um, the early 60s was still very much like the 50s in conservative elements because the 60s that we know of were sort of 
liberal period of great social tolerance so some came more in the late 60s um so basically Profumo was a war minister who shared a mistress with um a soviet agent and um soviet double agent i should say um the whole saga was very famous became a, and it was has been depicted in many uh productions uh from from this time um harold Macmillan was created earl of stockton in 1984 and died in 1986 at the age of 92 and i believe he was the second longest lived prime minister after jim callahan um an interesting point about Macmillan regarding the unemployment issue, he could be seen in some ways as what would today be called the compassionate conservative, very stark contrast to the sort of aggressive uh, approach of Thatcherism and actually through the Thatcher years he was quite a rebellious figure from what I understand. Um, I think David Cameron somewhat modelled himself on Harold Macmillan, although the economic environment is very different today. Um, also I think some of the things Cameron's done, um, I'm not sure if Harold Macmillan would have done some of those things, although that's purely my conjecture. I can't prove it, but for example, I'm not sure if Harold Macmillan would have had work capability assessments. But anyway, I'm not going to get too personal in these videos. Um, today, Macmillan's held in quite high regard. He's not considered one of our all time great prime ministers. But he's above average um so he's sort of in the second tier of prime ministers not great great figure but most historians generally see his premiership as more positive than negative and um, the scandals towards the end of it i think there could be some comparisons here towards eisenhower i don't mean in terms of scandals but in terms of a man who is personally popular but whose administration was seen as at the end quite weak and ineffective um but I think history will judge Harold Macmillan quite kindly. Um, his six years were, and still aren't, very much seen as uh, amongst the best times for Britons in uh, in modern British history. I believe he also had a program of house building. Though, don't quote me on that. Um, seeing if there's any more information, interesting notes I can say about um, Macmillan. He's been um, featured in many forms of and many media productions including Beyond the Fringe, Winston Churchill, The Wilderness Years, A Letter of Resignation, Eden's Empire, Never So Good. Uh, these are all plays that he's been in. Um, he had a very calm and amicable demeanor. The Winds of Change speech is worth listening to. Um, there's other material online from election broadcasts and so on. Um, this was also, it's worth noting, uh, the real midst of the Cold War and when Ian Fleming started writing his Bond books, actually the first Bond film, this isn't really anything to do with the Macmillan premiership, but it's just a coincidence, um, was Dr. No, 1962, uh, towards the end of the Macmillan premiership. Um, Harold Macmillan was very much a, a personification of his time. Um, there was a conservative elements there, of course, the establishment elements. He was came from a privileged background, but he was um, also representative of a, a brave new age in some ways, I think. Um, and I find him quite an interesting prime minister, actually. Um, and I've quite a lot of regard for him. Having not, uh, not claiming to be an expert on uh, Macmillan, his politics or his premiership, but that is Harold Macmillan. Any questions anyone wants to ask on any of this? Uh, I'll try my best to answer. That applies to all um, all prime ministers. Incidentally, uh, some of the names in his administration, his cabinet, were Rab Butler, Edward Heath, Reginald Maudling, uh, Lord Douglas Home, Peter Fornicroft, uh, Julian Amory, Enoch Powell, Bill Deeds, Sir Keith Joseph. Um, I should say uh, I mentioned a period of liberalisation, but that really came more in the late 60s although there's also growing intolerance um for example the windrush the first ship carrying west indian immigrants came around Macmillan's time and there were racial tensions the first notting hill race riot was 1958 so to say that it was a it was a time when the economy was recovering the late 50s but there were tensions in society as well it wasn't quite a utopian social picture 
Anyway, that is our 44th Prime Minister, Harold McMillan.